Okay. So I'm glad to be able to test these things out because, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, we're going to use this setup for other things. I don't think it's going to work. So we got to think of another setup. The fact that I can't hear you as loud as I should is it, ridiculous. Oh, is that better? Well, I mean, well, yeah, when you get close to the mic, I can hear a little better, but I've got everything maxed out on my end. It should be blowing my ears off. Okay. Um, I have to apologize for chewing. It's actually Nicorette's. I haven't been able to give them up yet. So I was, um, yeah, when I heard you were smoking, I was like, oh, I wish I had a cigarette. But I don't actually, I don't really. Uh, typically one before show. <laughs> And you would have a lot of equipment, I'm guessing, um, with the work you do. So I'm surprised that you're having problems with it. I have an entire TV studio. Okay. I'm in the studio. <laughs> I'm just gonna see, are we live? Yes, we are live on Facebook. Um, so welcome everyone to the Cosmic Ascension Waves of Light with myself, Soma Aral, and my guest this evening, I'm, I'm thrilled to have here. Um, he's called V. Um, he's a targeted individual, and he has the Red Pill Nation show. Um, so where should we start, V? We well, actually, that's Naroki 5's show. Uh, the Red Pill Nation is Naroki 5 and Rearson. Uh, I'm a regular guest host on the show uh, pretty much every other week. Uh, <laughs> so that's great. Uh, I'm actually the host of the Red Pill Hardcore Radio Show on the Public Broadcasting Network. And let's, okay, so the hard copy. Re the Red Pill Hardcore. Hardcore, sorry. Hardcore. Hardcore. Okay, so Let's start from the beginning. Where did you grow up? Obviously, you're an American with the, with the accent, but where, where did you grow up? I, I grew up in Austin, Texas. Okay. And yeah, a little blue spot in the middle of Red State. Okay. And, and was that a good upbringing? I'm sorry, one more time. Did you have a, was that a good upbringing? <clears throat> I'm guessing yep, that the upbringing uh, I had <laughs> it was unique. The good or bad is very subjective. Uh, objectively, I had an excellent upbringing. I come from a military family. You know, a father's retired military was uh, brother brothers. Uh, I, I was in the army, so. Objectively, I had a good upbringing. I learned everything about the world that I really did need to know. Okay. And so I'm going to skip forward a little bit. So when did the targeting start? Did it start as a child? Tell us there a bit. are different levels of targeting. There are different levels of... I mean, society knows of discrimination and, and uh, things like that. But as far as the covert military targeting, it began when I left 
the Army. I had got an honorable medical discharge, but the people, they didn't want to let me go. And they were very sour about that. Okay, so, and how long ago was that? When did you leave the army? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, late 2000s. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so that's like 20 years ago or something? Around 20 years? Wow. Thank you. I'm not that old. <laughs> uh, I was about, uh, I'm, I'm only 35 years old. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to say uh, more than 11 years ago. Okay, more than 11. So what? So when you left the army, what kind of things, I mean, so, so today we're just going to focus, focus on targeted individuals and what that means for us. Because sometimes I'm in interviews and I say to people who, who, who work in this field, I say to them, well, I'm a targeted individual. And then when I say things to them, they're very surprised, you know. Um, but so for the audience listening, what type of things did you start experiencing? And did you think it was yourself um, to begin with? Did you think you were going crazy? Because I know most people do, you know, think that. Um, because it's so because it's so unbelievable, it's so far-fetched, the stuff that we go through on a daily basis. And also I've got, um, I've been having a lot of um, voice to skull lately. Um, and when I first got that, I didn't even know there was such a thing. I just knew that I was having these experiences. So so tell us about your, your early experiences where you began to wake up to being and realizing that you were a targeted individual and and your experiences. Can you talk to that, B? Well, a lot of questions there. So <laughs> basically, I, I'm a highly intelligent person. Uh, I really don't like using the word genius. Uh, more of a savant without the idiot. Uh, I was tested very young for my IQ back in the kindergarten days. You know, like they, they pull certain students aside. Oh, we're gonna do some special testing. Oh, it's nothing, nothing special. You know, they're lying to the class. Uh, you know, I don't know why they do that. Maybe to make some students uh, feel, you know, everybody's equal, everybody's normal. But I pulled aside, get tested and shown them I was genius level. And so, <clears throat> Uh, that's what this kind of revolves around, actually. Uh, so I did, in fact, start experiencing some very strange things uh, right after right after leaving the military. I noticed I was harassed by police a lot, more so than than even, you know, a black suspicious gangster guy walking the streets, you know, always getting pulled over, always just, just, just harassed. Now, and what state, went, what county, what state were you in? Well, Travis County and Williamson County, which is, I think was the second federal state, uh, the second county to go uh, federal and in, in, in the union, but yeah, you you don't want to deal with these people in the courtrooms. I've had the fortune of people understanding that I'm in a situation where I shouldn't be. I've had talked to lots of police and and judges, and you know they always have this demeanor of approaching it as if I were a hardcore criminal, but as soon as I open my mouth, people start falling in love with me. So I've had that one little advantage going through this process. But anyhow, I started experiencing, uh, I want to say back in 2014, end of 2014, uh, 
what people will call voice skull, which is actually synthetic telepathy. Uh, two different technologies. Uh, and at a time... Okay, so let me get this right. So voice to skull and synthetic telepathy, are they different things? A voice to skull is nothing but microwaved uh, signals being beamed at a person's head and they pick up the audio. Yeah, because okay. I saw it. I watched and it. That's why you see the temple hats, you know, <laughs> and people try to get away from it. And people say that they have gotten away from it. Well, yeah. some people have gotten away from the voices and that's what it is, uh, uh, the microwave. I just have to... Uh, I well, just... It's, 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 it's the microwave hearing. Hold on, it's, it's the microwave <laughs> hearing. Uh, microwave, fray effect, uh, et cetera. There's radio frequency hearings. There are patents for it uh, uh, to help deaf people. All stuff exists, okay? Uh, oh, something telepathy is a whole different level. You can't get away from it because they use uh, ELF, but really scalar energy, which basically, you can block microwaves easy. Let me put it this way. ELF scalar, they use ELF to communicate with submarines in deep parts of the ocean, the military. So that's just how pervasive it is. That's how invasive it is. Uh, you can't get away from it. I mean, there's one way I know of, but I can't talk about that right now. But anyhow, uh, the synthetic telepathy, you're hooked up to an AI. Sometimes a real person, but that's very rare. Very rare. Uh, this AI talks to you. It's back and forth. It's mind reading. It, there's, there's a step in between, actually. Uh, remote neural monitoring. That's where they're able to read and pick up your thoughts. When I say they, the NSA, CIA. Yeah. Uh, start off as a CIA thing, but no, the NSA runs it. It's, it's their baby. Uh, so you have the remote neural monitoring, but if you have a one way street out, you also go uh, uh, a street in. So it's two lane road. That's when you're talking to the AI. That's, that's what simulates real schizophrenia. So with microwave hear, uh, hearing, the, the voice is gone, there's no two-way communications. So that's kind of what has the technology mixed up. That's why it's so hard for victims to describe because we're dealing with old terminology. And I'm having to leap forward and, and embrace the newer concepts and even invent a few myself, just name a few things. So, okay, and this 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 stuff is real for anyone listening that is um, doubting what V is saying. Um, and I know it's real because I've experienced a lot of it as V has as well. So so go away and research. Um, so I'm, I'm speaking to the audience now, V. I'm just saying you know to go away and research this stuff and to look at some of V's videos as well because he's made some documentaries that are really good information where he explains the technology and how it works and everything. And I did question it myself, V, when I was watching one of your documentaries and it was talking about um, they use the microwaves to, to, to use some of this technology, but I don't actually have a microwave. But then in the later part of your documentary, it talks about some of the other um, um, technology that they use. So... Can you take us back to your first experience where you thought, I'm going crazy, or, or this is real? <laughs> well, that was a very brief moment indeed. Uh, <laughs> so as I'm experiencing the synthetic telepathy, uh, <laughs> I was actually video gaming with some friends and I joked, to one of them, hey, Kirk, what you say? The NSA is listening to us over Skype because I read a, a, an article online. Uh, boom, hit me right there as soon as I said NSA. <laughs> and so uh, it, it took me a, a couple days, like, you know, 
Oh, is there some feedback in my my audio, my, my, my computer? What's going on here? Then I started what seemed like voices through the walls, the walls of my apartment. Uh, and some things start to click in my head. There's something extremely weird going on here that I really need to be aware of. See, now there were some things that happened before then. My two roommates had pretty much gone crazy. One left, the other roommate pretty much lived on the couch talking to himself for a month straight. He would make cat calls at our front door because uh, my apartment was at an intersection uh, on the outside of town. There was a gas station directly across the street and a bar. So make these strange cat calls, but I would come out every so often and ask him, hey, who are you talking to? What's going on? Oh, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not, I'm not talking to anybody. You hear me talking? I'm not talking to anybody. And I, but I had my door open to my room and just watched this guy talking to himself nonstop. <sighs> One day he disappeared. I was coming back from, from school, but I noticed he, he was gone and come back for like another week. And he, he got all his clothes and left. No other words. So I, a very stressing situations like, how am I gonna afford my rent now? Uh, well, luckily <laughs> I talked to the uh, apartment owners and they let me have this entire huge apartment to myself for the same price I was paying as a roommate. So I kind of looked out there. Uh, but also the neighbors down the way, started hearing voices. Uh, one of these individuals had a father who was constantly outside standing, talking to himself nonstop, 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 nonstop. There was another neighbor whom, which I, I actually talked to him about this and I was thinking it was kind of strange uh, uh, and I have recorded some video of some light phenomena happening in my apartment. I, I kid you not, he packed up his family and moved two days later. So <clears throat> and there's another neighbor who very aggressive, not towards anybody, but you could just hear him screaming to his children, whatever, when you walk by. Uh, and those people ended up moving out very abruptly. And so this was a very small complex of people. I wouldn't say it's eight, eight apartments. Okay. So <clears throat> that right there's a tip off. You, we're all experiencing something very strange. And then there's the individual downstairs who it's sort of like the rat. Anything that happens, anything's going on, she's immediately on the phone with the owners of the apartments. One of those, okay. The snitch. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, so um, I started hearing stuff and I'm thinking they're coming, the voices are coming through the walls. Hmm. That, that's very strange. Saying very personal things too. And uh, no, I, 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 was, well, I was thinking about this. This is not. This is not normal because he's threatening to kill me. There's a lot of death threats. Threatening to kill me. You know, one day I just left my door open. I had a machete with me. It's like, come on, you want to come over here? Come and take me. I, you know, you had some. I, I, I slept. On, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I slept on my couch, right there, with the door wide open, waiting for somebody to come at me. That's how much i i had no fear about the situation no fear i kind of sensed there this had something to do with fear i'm not the kind of person that feels fear 
I've had very tough situations in my life. I, I, fear is not something that I feel. So after nothing happened to me, I did a little experiment. I had a, a stack of mail that was addressed to other people that kept coming to my mailbox. So I went next door and asked the neighbor if any of this mail was his. And he spoke very elegantly. It was, you know, not the same voice, not the same voice at all. And it just said it wasn't his mail, yada, yada. So at that point, I knew it wasn't my neighbor. Okay, so once that was busted, other things start to happen. So I did, uh, so I've always studied. I've always been a, a student of as many subjects as I could. And psychology is one of those things that I studied ever since I could read. Uh, I spent enough time being grounded as a child where I've had nothing to do. I've read my encyclopedias from A to Z, okay? So I get books on psychology, mythology, any kind of ology. But psychology is something I was very interested in. So I was very young. This didn't seem like schizophrenia. And I didn't, I couldn't come to that conclusion really, other than, you know, this is something that has to be going on that's, that's, that has to do with me and some fear. So I, I, again, I looked up everything. I went back over everything that, I, that I've learned in the past and see if there's any new developments. And so, okay, one, I'm too young to, I'm sorry, I'm too old. I would be <laughs> younger if this was happening like if I was 12 or 13 at, at the latest, it could be considered schizophrenia, but I'm too old. Uh, secondly, it, it doesn't run in my family. There's no history of it in my family. Uh, thirdly, it just felt like it's coming from without. Mm -hmm. These were not voices coming from within. Yeah, it's coming from the outside. Right. Yeah. So and very shortly after coming to that conclusion, I dig a little, uh, dig a little deeper and I found targeted individuals. I'm like, ah, okay. So I go, I go down this ride. All right. That must have been a cry of relief when you discovered that, because that gives you an answer to, to and an explanation to what was going on with you. That must have been a huge relief. Well, I, I watched a couple of videos on it instantly on YouTube uh, of some people that were going through it and just the sense of dread hit me because there's just, all the information is just based on you can't get away from it. You can't get away from it. You can't, it you're, if you target it, you're doomed for life. Yeah. That's pretty much it's like, yeah. And, and so uh, I looked deep within myself. I found the singularity. Um, and the singularity is that point, it's literally a point, but it's everything. You can see everything from the Big Bang to the end of the universe. It's that, that, that one time you become one with God and answers just flood into your brain. I've meditated deeply and told myself, this is, I won't accept this destiny. And so I found this moment. It's like, yeah, okay. It's gonna take me 10 years to, to get you people, but I, but I got you. <laughs> uh, and as it stands, I'm currently ahead of schedule, um, but let's talk for another time. Uh, so once I figured out who it was, okay, because they, they kept trying to feed me uh, different psyopsis that they have, the standard ones, you know, uh, we're aliens, 
uh, we're angels, this, this is God. You know, it's like, these are all concepts that I will not bow to. So what's really going on? It took me a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, but I reverse interrogated the AI. And it kept leading to a general uh, answer of the government. Now, at some point, uh, the AI stopped. And I heard this like uh, feedback, like a, someone was moving a microphone from a speaker, sort of feedback. And there's a human voice, a voice I've never heard, uh, saying, this is the NSA. We want you to come back and work for us. I said, you're out of your mind. If you think I'm coming back to the military, <laughs> We're, you're a genius. We need you. Well, too bad. You should have took care of me when you had me. Click. Back with the AI. And it's, it had been the AI from that, before, that time forward onward. It was, I don't know. See, the military industrial complex has this thing where it's, we, we have to own you, okay? If you're going to be a genius, you have to be owned by somebody. You have to work for somebody. You have to give your inventions to somebody. Because you can't be rich. You can't be, you know, teaching people stuff that we don't want people to know. You know, yeah. they, they have to control. You know, a, a genius is just, same thing as going, uh, tapping oil well. It's a resource. Yeah. And they want to own everything, especially when these cult members are, they, they dedicate their lives to mind control. And that's what government means. Gouvernare mente. It's Latin. Gouvernare, govern. Mente means mind. So uh, people don't, don't see past the new upholstery, the, the new, you know, whistles and bells, uh, tear down that stuff and you're gonna see the same uh, cult that's been plaguing humanity since we started, yeah. okay? Uh, we are intelligent, sensible creatures, okay? It's, to have government, it's, it's not natural. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a cancer in human society. We need to be governing ourselves. But anyhow, uh, so I started doing everything to these people that they were doing to me. They knew everything about me. Okay, so I data mined them. Okay, so they have this technology. How, how does it work? And I, I did one of those Zen moments again. How does this work? How does this work? What's different about my world? And I'm just looking around my apartment. You know, there's just there's no bugs. There's no equipment in the walls. There's just, just none of that. Um, step outside. You know, what's, what's different about this world? What, how can they do this? And I'm looking up. And at this point in time, I lived in California. I looked up to the sky. And the sky is just cross pattern contrails. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, it's the contrails. That's how they're doing it. And just, <laughs> you would believe what the AI, the, the AI was freaking out. It's not the controls, it's not the controls. Please don't think that. Please don't think that. It's not the controls, it's not the controls. Uh, yeah. Oh, look I, got you. Look I got you. <laughs> so at that point on, you know, my, my research into nanotechnology and uh, frequency warfare, it, it, it all converged. And that's literally what it is. Uh, some very simple components to do this 
mass crime on humanity. So that's a big revelation that you had there when you went outside and looked to see, I mean, really looked to see what was going on and where to it stop was. and smell the roses. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's huge. So that must have been a big changing point for you, a big life changing moment, you know? Absolutely. Well, I started taking back control. And uh, that's something that these target individuals these days, they just, they have this whole messiah uh, concept, I should say, that, that, they're, that they believe in, that they're waiting for. Now, I'm not going to trash your religion, but uh, away. if this stuff was happening to begin with, if, the, if there was somebody around who was destined to, to stop evil uh, from happening to certain people, you'd think they would stop it from the very beginning and not ever let it happen. But anyhow, target individuals these days are all helpless. Help me, help me, somebody help me. Help me, help me, help me. Now, okay, I'm a student of theosophy, okay? Um, I'm a student of, of a lot of religions, actually, a lot of concepts. Again, I'm, I'm a polymath. Uh, I like to explore all fields of, of knowledge. Now I am a jack of all trades, a master of some. And I, I noticed you had a, a guest on your show, not the basher, when she's saying that somebody that calls himself a master is not really a master. There's just a, no, 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 no. It's- Which guest would that be? Ma <laughs> all a master is, is somebody who takes information and use that information to gain control over their life. That's a master. I have to ask you, which guest was it? <laughs> uh, you don't have to name her, just describe her. To Toady Frog or something like that. Uh, blonde lady. Uh, okay, yeah, kind of heavy set. I know who you mean. Yeah. Okay. No, no. There, there are masters, and those are the people who control and an engineer. There are indeed masters. So, <clears throat> I've had to become master of my universe. So I already mastered myself. I mean, that's why they got into my head to begin with. They got in my head because they know I can't be led. So I, I started learning as much as I could and yes, using that information to regain control over my life. I just need to, to ask you a question about that because I don't really understand that. So, because with me, I, I can't be controlled. I mean, I just can't, you know, I've had people try and, and steer me in a certain direction and I've got such a stubborn stubborn personality that I, I just won't be told what to do and I've been like that ever since I was very small you know and um so but what do you mean by because I don't really understand what you were saying there that because because people like you and me won't be controlled um that they do try and and Target us, target us for that reason that we can't be controlled. But what is the point in doing that? Are they trying to? Oh, I see. So, so I, I, actually, I think in answering my question, I've got the answer. So, because we can't be controlled, that's why they're doing it because they're trying to control us. Is that right? If you if you are targeted, especially via the covert technology which is highly legal, by the way, uh, it means that you're either a person of great influence, potentially, or 
you're a person of great intelligence and can rebel. So a lot of people are targeted because of those two reasons. That, that's the base. You have a lot of doctors, you got a lot of lawyers, you got a lot of scientists. You got a lot of people who are celebrities who experience the something filthy, but they'll never say anything. Most people experiencing this. But then you've got will never say anything. But then you've got the spiritual people as well, who I think are hugely targeted. You know, the channels and people that that people that channel information. I think they are targeted be, because of what they're doing. I think that's why I'm targeted. I think that's one of the reasons. You know, <laughs> I had some abilities when I was a child. I had the OBE thing down. I could, uh, that's out of I, I, I can see into the future 24 hours in advance maximum I could like live an entire day just to wake up and then experience that entire day again so uh, <laughs> I've since lost those abilities uh, I guess uh, since losing my innocence becoming an adult maybe uh, I don't know. I, I think I did a trade-off. Um, I have a bit of a an ultra instinct. Uh, so I, I'm more a super soldier than anything. Um, I <laughs> my instincts are so so spot on. It's almost a level of like Spider-Man. Uh, I can. I don't know why. Like something can fall behind me. I can turn around and catch it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can, I can't remember the last time I fell. You know, I've slipped on ice uh, <laughs> being here in Poland. I slipped on ice. I've done a little dance to, just to plant myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've never lost my equilibrium. So the last time I've actually fallen and hit the ground, I have no memory of ever being, of ever doing that. Wow. Um, I mean, it's it gets down to a level. I mean, multiple things are falling. I, I will, you know, juggle and then catch my foot like like a cartoon, you know. Yeah. Uh, can, you, just, can you do that because you're seeing it in your mind before it's happening? It's not that I see it before it's happening. Like I said, it's just a it's an ultra instinct. As things happen, I become attuned to those movements. Um, I, I'm a combat expert. Um, you know, I've never lost a fight in my life. Uh, but it, it's just, uh, you're, you, you have to, when you're in that state, you're not interacting with just one thing or one entity. You become a part of the universe. You just become one with the universe, one with your surroundings. I know it sounds kind of corny, like something out of a movie, but it's absolutely real. And it just, it's like reading the words as they're being written. So it's not a before or after thing. It's right there in the moment. In the moment, okay, got it. So, right. Wow. So are you, are you the black sheep of the family? Yes. How's okay. you guess? <laughs> you have to watch out for those black sheep because they are the ones that, you know, everything has been inverted and twisted around. And I, I've always believed that the black sheep, because I'm a black sheep as well, that the black sheep are actually the good ones in the family. And I often find, especially in my own family, that it's the... It's the it's the white sheep, as so so to speak, that are um, actually the black sheep. Like it's been, it's everything is twisted around, everything has been inverted, and um, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I had an older brother, 
Uh, he was the golden child. Uh, he got everything he wanted. Spoiled rotten. You know, he was bought cars and, and expensive clothing and things like that. Uh, but when I came around, hey, guess what? You get the hand-me-downs. Oh, yeah. Nikes. <laughs> uh, you better take these off brands. <laughs> you know, it was like, well, with the shoes, I understand. I, I got to a uh, size 14, at the age of 14, the shoes. And, uh, and, you know, I was ripping my shoes apart, like, like the Hulk. But that, I understand. But anyways, yeah, just a lot of hand-me-downs, a lot of, uh, I, I wasn't even bought a car like my other siblings were. I got their hand-me-down car. So uh, being the baby, I should have been the spoiled one, but I, I, I wasn't. So, but you know, that's okay. It, that's one of those things that prepared me for life, especially being a targeted individual. Uh, a lot of times I didn't have money to go out and buy something. So I'm my own repairman. I recycle, I recycle things like you wouldn't believe. I repurpose, I'll take things apart and make something else. And I do that kind of stuff all day, every day. So <clears throat> I'm not one for aesthetics, but utilization is, is uh, much, much better. Yeah. Have. Yeah. I mean, there is so much stuff that we chuck away sometimes that is, um, there's nothing wrong with it. I think that, um, yeah. Being an environmentalist is a good thing, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to take a very short break here, V, and I'm going to play a piece of music um, by Elijah Ray that I do have permission to play. Um, just to, um, this is seven minutes long, 7.34 minutes long. Well, I, what time is it? You got to come on my show. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm going to. Um, I'm just going to play a piece of music just very quickly. I may not play the whole thing, just so we can make tea and re and gather our thoughts. Um, and I will send you some messages as well in in the Zoom chat. So I shall see you in a few minutes. But I'll talk to you in between then.
Yes, we are back. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I just had to gather my thoughts. Um, so let me make sure that that is not sharing. Yes, that's okay. Um, I'm just going to close YouTube as well. Okay, so yep, I have my coffee here. I just made a quick coffee and just gathered my thoughts. Yeah, I have to go get the, uh, the merch. I'm going to go hardcore. Come to an online store near you. <laughs> it's all about the merch. <laughs> so, 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 I have a really like I've had a really unusual life, and most of it hasn't been good. Like I, I started off um, as a child. I was born in South Africa, um, and all, as a white, as a white. As a white person, not even nothing to do with male or female, but as a white person, I always, as a young child, I always had a huge amount of guilt in in what white people have done to to certain countries, in what British people have done in certain countries, and um, but I also realised that that has nothing to do with me at all. But anyway, I had, like, I had, as a child, been um, born in South Africa. Um, I had a huge amount of guilt that I, I, I think I've come to terms with or don't have it now. But so I, I, I was born in South Africa, moved to Ireland when I was about seven, then moved to London in the UK, um, moved to a place called Hackney, which is like the Bronx. And I grew up there. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Are, you, you're going to spoil this for me. You know you're coming on my show here in about 30 oh, yeah. minutes, right? <laughs> but the reason, I'm sorry, B, the reason I'm telling you is that, um, because I, I want to get to know more of your, of your um, targeted individual experiences. So I was kind of leading up to, but I'll just go straight into to it. So one of my first experiences with, I started, I, so I moved to Ireland 2009, 2010. I started to channel the Pleiadians consciously. Um, and immediately, like two or three months, I think it was, maybe even two or three weeks, straight away, I got start. I started to get being targeted. I, I became targeted. Once I released um, on Facebook that I was channeling the Pleiadians. So that's how my targeting started. Um, and I was actually, um, I might save that for you, for your interview, um, that first experience, because, yeah. So, so tell us more about your experiences. I'll save all that stuff for, for later on. Hmm. Do, you, do you, like, is it just voiced skull? Is it just voice technology that they use on you? Or do you, when you're in the astral, when you're asleep? Do you get things happening? Do you get things happening in the day? Do people follow you? Because I know they have with me. Um, I know I'm being watched. I know I've had my telephone tapped. My emails get intercepted. Um, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So does that happen to you or is it just mostly voice to mind technology? <clears throat> they tried the gang stalking with me. It lasted for about two weeks. Um, again, this, this program works only if you're afraid. If if, you, if they can get you to, to be afraid. I once again, I the concept of fear is, is beyond me. Uh, but I'm very confrontational. Uh oh. Let's just, I, I, that's, that's the <laughs> lightest. That's the lightest way I can put it. Uh, <laughs> that's the lightest way I can put it. I'm very confrontational. So, so these game stalkers. I'm sorry to jump in there, but 
so that leads me to a question because I'm starting to like I want to get a picture in my mind of you of you and who you are as a person and I'm starting to to see a, a little bit of a bigger picture so of who you are I'm trying to get well okay it, it, I just this, is, this, is, this is kind of me. This is what I tell people. I just, I just want to ask you one very quick thing, and then and then you've got the floor. Okay. Um, you're, so, do you know on a soul level who you are, where you came from, why you're here? Absolutely. And, uh, and, also, and also, do you know, have you seen your past lives? I, I tap into my genetic memory all the time. I'm somebody who has made a vow to destroy these people. Uh, I don't know exactly how many lifetimes I've vowed to do that, but I know it's definitely one for this one and this one, and I vowed the next one if I didn't finish the job this time around. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I, and just picturing me, just, just if you could get the concept, it's just, imagine, and this is absolutely true, imagine someone who, is a chess champion and a string football player. Okay, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I learned to play chess when I was five. My my my, my dad taught it to me. Uh, never really played it again. Fast forward <laughs> several years. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm in junior high, eighth grade. Someone drags me into the, the chess club. They're having a tournament. I won the tournament. So, and at that time, yeah, I was having fun. I, I was a string football player, girls loving me. You know, I'm, I'm loving being the guy on the team that is told, you don't have to work out today. <laughs> no, you're already twice as big as everybody else. You don't have to work out today. <laughs> uh, and, but my dad, he was not allowed to work out, period. He was just raw muscle <laughs> when he was in school. But, you know, <laughs> we're all a little bit different, I guess. But, but that's how I am. So the gang stalking stopped because I started approaching these individuals. Not aggressively at first. I just started doing what they were doing to me because they, they pull up next to me in a, in a vehicle, pull up newspaper and a tablet, whatever. And follow me everywhere I go. I had started walking up to their vehicles, writing down license plate number, getting the description of who they are, take a picture of them. And, and, and it was old people, retirees. Every time it was someone wearing a retired Navy, retired Air Force, retired some military, yeah. wearing a hat. Okay, each one of them. It's like, so they, they pull these people out of retirement or give them something to do because uh, they have nothing to do. It's like they didn't already waste 20 or 30 years of their lives. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah. They think it's the service of their country. That's what they're told. Yeah. You get, you get the same thing here, V. You know, I do, I do get followed a lot. And um, I've been going to the beach a lot. And um, I definitely get followed on the beach. Which, which is strange because, but I can feel it. You know, I'm one of those people like you, when, when you were describing like turning around and being able to catch something when, as it drops. Um, for example, I was in my supermarket and the, the ceiling is about hundred foot tall and I could feel something above my head and I didn't know what it was. And I was looking up, looking up, I couldn't see anything. And then I looked directly above me and I could see this window and it was actually, because I could feel something above my head. And I looked up and there was a sky, like a, a little window skylight in the ceiling, which was like a hundred feet above my head. And um, it was actually birds flying above me. Like I really, I'm very, very sensitive to energy, um, whether it's birds or animals or, or humans, any, any type of energy. I'm like, I, I've got a very wide span field going out where I'm able to to feel energy in my surroundings so I know when I'm being followed um, and there are times I do feel something above my head and I'm outside and sometimes I think well it must be a drone because I'm not really sure what it is um, but I do absolutely get followed I also see a lot of people with like a NASA t-shirt N-A-S-A -S -S -A, NASA t-shirt on um, 
So, and for me, that's alarm bells. But yeah, so I'll just pass it back over to you, V. Well, okay, so after the game stop, we stopped because I, 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 I'm i pretty sure I scared, scared the hell out of these elderly people. Uh, yeah, I started getting the drone stalking. Uh, one actually hovered outside of my apartment window for hours. I stared at it for hours, like wanting it to make a move. You know, <laughs> go ahead, you know, <laughs> oh, make a move. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just wanting you to. I stared for hours. Was it reachable? It away. If you open the window, could you have reached in and got it? Could you have reached out and grabbed it? Yeah. I, 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 I could open the window and, and punched it. Yeah. Did you ever think about doing that? I was waiting for it to do something aggressive. Oh. I had uh, my machete right next to me. I would have flew right through the window like a freaking superhero. <laughs> I was ready. I was ready. But uh, after that point on, I was being followed everywhere around town. Uh, I lived in a very small retirement community. Uh, of only about 16,000 people in California, but yet this uh, drone followed me around. I went even out to the mountains where I lived, out of town. So tell us about that. I mean, I heard you. I heard in another interview with you that that we did together that you knocked it when you opened the window. You accidentally knocked it. Um, the drone. Oh, no, I don't remember saying that. Oh, okay. Maybe I misheard. Um, yeah, but it was outside your window, wasn't it? Right outside my window. Yeah. The first thought that came to my mind was UFO. <laughs> and then, you know, it's, it's, wait a minute, hold on. Be reasonable here. This is a government drone. <laughs> you know, Occam's Razor is really your best friend. And but yeah, it came very close. So <clears throat> I still have issues to this day. I don't, I don't want to say issues, uh, but I've got a government drone that sits outside my windows. Uh, not, not directly outside, about a, a mile to the left, right outside my studio. Uh, anytime I have something important to do. And it's just right there. And I'll put up a camera, I'll put up a camera phone or something and record it. Let the people know I'm watching you too. Is this in California or in Poland? Because you're in Poland now. So this was in California to Poland. Okay. This, uh, this program is worldwide, it's global. But is this the, your experience with the... Um, with the drone, do you still get that happening now? Yeah, yeah. There's one outside my studio right now. God. Yeah. Like I said, anytime I have anything important to do, it'll be right there. And I will prop up a camera and I'll record it. I think you should get another drone to follow it. <laughs> well, if I could fly, <laughs> well, I mean, you should get. I don't, I, don't, I don't do anything. I don't hurt anybody. You know, I keep to myself. But if these people want to play these games. You know, it's not going to be a, a situation of, oh, well, he's crazy. Yeah, that's why I have so much video evidence of it. So I, I, I'm removing the crazy person factor out of this. Uh, I'm, I will be taking these people to court at some point in time, in the future. They will <laughs> find themselves in court with me. Uh, that's something that they have actually been avoiding, keeping me out of the courtrooms. Uh, <laughs> many times I should have been arrested, but they're like, uh, no, we're not gonna let you be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't want me, uh, uh, and they don't want me educating people because many, 
people in jail are targeted some level and it's state sponsored you know uh people having to deal with cps you know those people are locked up to take away your children um <clears throat> uh, you know just any situation they don't they they thought told me we're not gonna put you in jail so you're gonna teach people why they're in jail and they're gonna get pissed <laughs> so I, I've, I've done some crazy things just for the cops just to let me go. <laughs> and do you, so do you have like a good support of light workers and positive people around you that are awake, aware and conscious and working for the good of humanity? Do you, do you work with like, do you have friends and support around you that work that you <clears throat> are, not, are supportive? knowing what you what the, the stuff that you go through? Well, I will say this. I have a lot of witnesses uh, uh, to things and to also answer your previous question. Yes, uh, I get the computer hacking, not so much because I've taken control of a lot of that stuff. Uh, my mail tampered with, if I get it at all, so if I order any electronics to the mail, forget forget it. It's broken uh, or stolen. So uh, yeah, official government documents show up opened. Um, uh, other aspects of targeting. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I've gotten the whole range, especially the uh, the. Shocking. A lot of people get burned. With me, they do the shocking. They, they did the shocking. Uh, and that's to create they say, trauma, right? Or fear. Well, they, they say this is a fingerprintless crime. You know, the, that's how they're getting away with it. But there is evidence. Evidence is left a lot of times because you have those people who complain of this sort of thing and they have the burns in their skin and but they're taken to a mental hospital and doctor writes cigarette burns. Okay. Uh, I got the shocks up the spine and I, there's evidence of that too. My C1 and C, C2, where it should look like a donut, it actually looks like a row of shark's teeth because my spine is calcifying. That's one thing I'm going to admit in the court as oh evidence. Oh, I live a very painful existence. I haven't heard of these things before, of you know, of the of the body being shocked or burned. I haven't heard of that before. A re remote ele electrocution, yes. Um, uh, you know, oh yeah, they have the heart attack rays and all the stuff. So it's all based on the same stuff. So. Um, I'm sorry, what was your last question? I was just oh. saying, that it's okay, love. I was just saying that I hadn't heard of um, the body being burned before in, in a negative attack. Um, well, women call me all the time saying that they're being sexually assaulted, remotely raped. I've heard uh, that, yeah. Th they can't do that with this technology. Yeah. You know, the, they love doing that. Uh, you know, these nerds that can't get laid in real life. I, I do feel, I did feel sorry for them until I heard that they were doing that. But, you know. How does that work? It, like, because I get that a lot, and I've had it a lot recently where I, I you know, you know, they're having. You, have a, you have a nervous system. We all have a nervous system. But the, with the technology, how does the technology work? Because that's what I want, want to understand. I don't really mm. understand. Well, now you're talking about transhumanism. We are all inundated, saturated with nanoparticulates of the nature of certain metals and, and uh, minerals. Yeah. Titanium. Aluminum, barium, strontium, you know, the chemtrails. Okay, so 
once that stuff is breathed in, it gets in your blood circulation, right? Breaks the blood brain barrier into the mind and laces your neural pathways. So <clears throat> with all the Wi-Fi and frequency technology, especially with the ELF and scalar, your entire nervous system is mapped. The brain, everything is mapped. And a lot of times it's overrided. Okay. This is done as remote. Uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, you're picture the the doctor. Uh, well, well, I'm, I'm saying picture the uh, that 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 game with the little body of the surgery, and like, you touch certain parts and things will happen. Uh, well, that's 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 all it's for them. They can touch a part of the screen and boom, you got a headache, or they can touch your vagina and, and you feel great. But we have gone over time. My show's starting. Are you joining us? I'm joining you. <laughs> All right. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, love. So I'm going to sign out. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And um, 